on that word, on that particular last sentence. You're able to declare that you will not die but live, so that you can do what? Declare the goodness of the Lord. You are alive to declare the goodness of the Lord. And if that is your testimony this morning, intentionally shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we have one testifier in the house. 
God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank him for giving my father to buy the grace to buy a new car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only by God's mercy. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, the Lord. Also. Pull up to the testimony. It's my testimony. They are the same and one. The Lord blessed me with a new car. Hallelujah. And the beauty is that I just made a passing comment. And God made it a burden in the heart of someone. And I, while I was just there going about my business, somebody was cracking his head. My dear husband, on how to buy me a car. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I pray. The Lord will hear your silent prayers Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will cause men to have sleepless nights Amen. to attend to your needs. They are poor helpers of destiny. That shall be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for you are good indeed and your mercy endures forever. The evidence of your goodness is that we're gathered in your house alive and well and put together, O oh Lord. We thank you. We declare you are good and your mercy is everlasting. Thank you for this testimony and the testimony of everyone that is here, O oh Lord, which is so clear. You've given us life, our salvation, our living hope that is in Christ Jesus. We give thanks, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. House shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody praise the Lord. If you ask, if you're in the house this morning, not by your power, not by your might, you slept yesterday night, you woke up this morning, not by your strength, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah! The one who is not in the hospital this morning, whose two hands can be lifted, whose legs can walk, can you rise up on your feet and shout a glorious hallelujah? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Please let's have our seat. Almighty Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We thank you for the privilege to gather together to study at your feet. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would be in this service with us in Jesus' name. You would teach our hearts. We know that our minds are fertile grounds as the word are coming. Let them bear forth fruit in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let our fruits abide in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will continue with the Beatitudes. Can anybody remind us of the topics we've treated? Anyone? We've been treating the Beatitudes for about um, some weeks now. Can anybody remind us of any of them? Yes. The meek are the hungry. Thank you. Another person? The topic. Oh, okay. Just the poor and the and the mourner, yes. The last one. The merciful and the pure in heart. Today we'll be talking about the peacemakers and the persecuted. And our memory verse is taken from 1 Peter 3 verse 14. We're all going to read together. 1 Peter 3 14. Can we all read? Can we read? This is God's word. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 3, 14. Let's go. But and if ye suffer for righteousness, 
Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Let's go over it again. But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Praise ye the Lord. That's a word of comfort for us this morning. Praise ye the Lord. A Bible passage is taken from Matthew 5, 9 to 10. Very quickly. Sister Glory, very Praise the Lord. Our outlines, we have two outlines. Blessed are the peacemakers and blessed are the persecuted. The Bible verse that you just read said, talked about, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peacemakers. Praise the Lord. Who are peacemakers? Who are peacemakers? Are you one? Are you an ambassador of peace? Are you not sure? If you're sure, say that. Are you a peacemaker? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so why do some of us hide our heads when it's time to resolve conflicts? Are you a peacemaker? Do you intentionally seek peace? Praise the Lord. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. A peacemaker is one who prevents strife, contention, and war. They use their influence to reconcile opposing parties. Praise the Lord. Whether in family, in community, you know, amongst friends, your neighbors. So are you a peacemaker this morning? Are you an ambassador of peace? Are you one? Praise the Lord. If you are not, then you are not a child of God. I didn't say that. It's what is written in the Bible. Hallelujah. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. However, in the context of the relationship between God and man, those who witness for Christ, hallelujah, we were here yesterday at the crusade, those who witness for Christ, who share their faith with their friends, who serve others in the name of Christ, they are the ambassadors of peace. Praise the Lord. That's the first context. So if you do not share your faith, you have friends, you know, that are not saved and you're not sharing the word of God with them, then you're not an ambassador of peace. It's not just about resolving conflict. You have to tell others. If you have been saved, praise the Lord, then you ought also to share your faith. If you truly believe, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 8, 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Now then, we are the ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How? Jesus calls us the children of God. Once you are saved, praise the Lord. The Prince of Peace was actually born to give us peace. Hallelujah. To reconcile us back to the Father. Therefore, because he did that and we are now children of God, heirs of God, joint heir with Christ, we ought also to share that same faith. It is only then that we will qualify to be called the ambassadors of peace. Praise the Lord. The term also includes those who make peace between men, whether as individuals or as communities. So, one, yes, you have to share your faith, tell others about Christ, witness to others. But also, when you allow peace, you know, instead of conflict, praise the Lord, you are also a peacemaker. Those who worthily endeavor to make peace, even if they did not succeed, so you have so many people, at least there are so many people you will recognize um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is always, you know, looking for peace one way or the other. You can call them peacemakers as well, praise the Lord. There are so many people in the world that it is not for any gain. Praise the Lord. They just want peace. Hallelujah. They are also peacemakers. Praise the Lord. 
Our God is the God of peace. Praise the Lord. When Christ was born into this world, Isaiah 9 verse 6. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Can we all read together? And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. That's why you and I have peace. Because our Father, praise the Lord, our Savior is a God of peace. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of peace. It is by His Spirit that we are made His children. If we are not peacemakers, we do not have the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. If we are not peacemakers, then we do not have the Spirit of Christ. Ephesians 6.15 Ephesians 6, verse 15. And your feet, and your, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. And so if we're not doing this as a church, we're also not peacemakers. And um, I mean, if you were here yesterday, you know this is exactly what we did and that will continue to do more. And it doesn't have to be physical. You can do it on your phone. You can share your faith with others on your phone. Praise the Lord. Then you are a child of the Most High God. The second outline talks about blessed are the persecuted. Matthew 5 verse 10 says, if you're persecuted for righteousness, you're blessed. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. What does it mean to persecute? Anyone, what does it mean to persecute? Have you ever been persecuted for your faith? Anyone? Who has ever lived in the north here? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And daily, Christians are being killed in the north, even up to today. You know, when you see it on the internet, they usually do talk about the northeast part of Nigeria. You assume it's just in India. I saw some videos. Then we appreciate this gospel. Hallelujah. People are being killed every day, and yet they will not deny their faith. Hallelujah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To persecute means literally to pursue, follow after, as one pursues a fleeing enemy. But in this context, it means that you are being oppressed on account of your faith. So if you are in the midst of uh, maybe your organization, you are surrounded by the other religion, people of other religion and of other faith, and you know, you can't even say let us pray, everybody, even, even now, even where there are Christians, when you say let us pray, everybody will be like, they have come again, hallelujah. That's, that's, you are being persecuted, maybe you are not aware of it. And so some of us, we, we don't even, you know, you don't even say a word of prayer under your breath in your office again because you don't want anybody to, you know, to, persecute you or castigate you one way or the other. People have been denied promotions because of their faith. People have been demoted because of their faith. Praise the Lord. 
but we are comforted this morning because we have hope. Romans 8:18. 8, Romans 8:18. 8, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Praise the Lord. If you are being persecuted for your faith, count it all joy. Hallelujah. So people suffer for, for doing evil. So that is not persecution. Hallelujah. If you have done something evil and you have been punished, that is your punishment. That is not persecution. Some are persecuted for reasons unrelated to righteousness. Praise the Lord. It's still not the same thing. The one that the Bible is referring to this morning is if you are persecuted on, your, on the account of your faith, on preaching the gospel, on being a Christian, a believer. Hallelujah. The Bible is telling us this morning that you are blessed. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I, I saw a story um, was being related by an American preacher. And um, he went to China to preach. And he said, these people, they have no pews, nothing. They will sit on the floor. And they will go for hours. You know, they won't even complain. And then, you know, he said, after spending a few days with them, he was really surprised. He said, ah, how are you? You know, it's so much desire that the church in America will be like these people, you know, fervent in the Lord. They are not deterred, they are not moved. And then they asked him when he was about to leave that please pray for us. That, um, you know, of course, government is always going after them. There's, it's communism in China. And so you can't preach freely, you'll be arrested and all of that. So he said it was one thing that actually caught his attention was the fact that they know so much of the word and they don't have a physical Bible because if you are caught with one, you are going to prison. He said, I so you now ask them, how? how did you learn this scripture? He said, ah, that once they are arrested, they know they are going to prison. So the people that are still outside, that, that haven't been jailed, they will write the scripture in a sheet of paper. And so when they come for the station, they will just quickly squeeze it in. And so the others that are there said, you only have a few minutes to learn it and pass it to somebody else. Because you must not be caught with that sheet of paper. He said, so that is all they do. That if you, you know, ask them to maybe recite, uh, maybe ask them, it is from the beginning to the end. They don't have any Oh, let me read verse 1, 2. There is nothing like that. Praise the Lord. He said he looked at them. And he, and he said, my prayer for you is that your church in China will not be like the church in America. And because once you have the comfort, you know, you tend to, okay, there's time. We would read. You know, let me read. Today, you pick um, maybe the book of Matthew. Let me read from chapter 1. I want to read from chapter 1 to... Uh, chapter uh, verse 5 1 to 5 and then you leave it but they know that they do not have that luxury of time they are persecuted daily so when they are released they are still going from house to house still preaching the God they know they will be arrested if caught but yet hallelujah and some are being killed the, the, the videos that I saw are not they are not I mean I can't share them because at some point I could not watch them again. I saw a video and what it reminded me of Brother Stephen in the Bible. I, I think it was similar of what he did to that man. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible is saying they are blessed for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As Christians, we are not expected to seek or provoke persecution. So you are not supposed to go out, you know, and to provoke others to persecute you. But however, we are to consider it a blessing if in the honest effort to live righteously, others persecute us. You don't have to go out or provoke anyone to persecute you. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, verse 12. Please, the NLT version. Or oh, I'll read from here. It says everyone, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ. 
That is what the NLT version says. That if you want to live righteously in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. Hallelujah. To endure persecution for the sake of righteousness, it requires uncompromising faithfulness to God. If an Amorba visits you now, your life or deny your faith, what will be your option? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Acts 7, verse 55 to 59. that Bible passage, I'm always, you know, surprised, concerned. It was being stoned. Ordinary kick can be terrible. Not to talk of being stoned, but he had a hope. He, he would have cried out in pain, but he looked up to heaven. What he saw, praising the Lord. Every other thing faded away. Nothing mattered anymore. He could not have felt any pain. At that point that he looked up to Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. That is the hope that we have in Christ. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Romans 8, 35 to 39. We're very quick to quote that Bible passage. But today, as we do, let us think once again. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Can we say it together? Every one of us. And you know, let's let's say it with understanding of the word. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Let's read together. From the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, through him that loved us, for I am persuaded, please say it, I'm saying mine, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I hope that that should also be a prayer point. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Let's ask that there be nothing that will be able to separate me from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. to show our love with our tithes and offerings. If you have your tithes in the house, please come forward with your tithes. And we may all rise up to take our offering together. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. 
Let's please pray on our tithe as we drop it in the appropriate basket. We can just individually pray and then drop it in the basket and we may return to our seats. Let's rise up as we take the offering at the same time. Mm -hmm. your name. Indeed, what shall separate us from your love? Father, we thank you because we have the ability to express our love this morning in the giving of our offering and even in the payment of our tithe. We ask, O oh Lord, that your promise to every tither Father, will be fulfilled even speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that those who tithe, things will not be tight for them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you will rebuke every form of devourer for their sakes in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask, O oh Lord, that our offerings will receive a hundredfold return and you will bless us individually as givers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please let's be seated. First name of Jesus. First name of Jesus.
Respectfully suggest that when we praise God or we talk to Him, it's good if we make it audible. He created the ears and He can hear, also the tongue so that we can speak. Let's go ahead and bless His name this morning. This is not a prelude or an interlude. I really mean, please, let's go ahead and lift Him up. There's absolutely no one like you. Lord, I bless you. Lord. I worship you. You sit in heaven, you do as you please. There's no one like you. And you know the beautiful thing? As great and mighty as he is, he has also made you and I to be so very special. He has made us to be temples. He has made us to be his dwelling place. Let's bless his name. Now we 
this morning as we look into your word. Please let it be that you be revealed in us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I ask that you are known of your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. May God do something new in your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please ask your neighbor for me. Are you a little Jesus? Are you a little Jesus? What was the response? Are you a little Jesus? You didn't answer. Are you a little Jesus? Okay, let's ask Pastor. Pastor, are you a little Jesus? Without noise. Without noise. You know, the parable of the fish and the barley loaves in the Bible illustrates a very important principle. That's found in John chapter 6. It shows how Jesus can take sometimes nothing and sometimes something very small and something very ordinary and make it into something extraordinary. He can take base material and make it to be valuable. He can take it, you know, raw what do you call a diamond before it's processed? A diamond in the rough and make it to be a shining, glittering, and valuable gem. It can take you and it can take me and make us into something extraordinary. But that's only if we release ourselves to him. Praise the name of the Lord. It took a small launch of a little boy and he multiplied it to the point where there was excess. I pray that you will release yourself to him in the name of Jesus. At least pray for me to now that I will release myself to him in the name of Jesus. John chapter 12 verse 24. John chapter 12 verse 24 says, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Praise the Lord. If the corn except it falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But the process of growth, the process of multiplication means falling and dying. Sometimes to go up, we need to go down first. Praise the Lord. And sometimes for you to become the totality of all that God has purposed and planned for you. You may have to go through some processes and some training. This scripture that we just looked at, John chapter 12 verse 24, it illustrates the very essence and the purpose of the existence of Jesus, why he came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, in verse 32 of that same scripture, it says, and if I, I'm reading the Amplified, and if I, and I, if and when I'm lifted up from the earth on the cross, I will draw and attract all men, Gentiles as well as Jews to myself. King James says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. God bless the media department in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' death on the cross was not just symbolic. It wasn't just that he came to die and tick off a box. There was a plan. A very, very carefully thought out and executed plan. And that plan can be found in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and, 
and shall not cease. So we're talking about the plan. And the plan leveraged heavily on the, the principle of sowing and reaping. But not just any seed. Because if a farmer wants to reap cassava, what must he plant? Cassava. Amen. And so I took a look in my Bible and I discovered that there's something else that is important about seeds. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, Genesis 1 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 21 and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly what after that kind again in Genesis chapter 6 verse 20 it says of fowls after their kind and of cattle of every creeping thing of the earth praise the Lord so you can see that is not just that the plan involves sowing. It involves sowing a very specific kind of seed. Basically, God looked at the earth and saw that there was a problem. And we're not just talking about the problem of sin. That's a given. That's self-evident. But he discovered, because Jesus is the plan and he can take care of it, but there's a problem. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Plenty of souls to be saved. So many. But the people to do the work are not so many. Thank God that God has finally released, I mean, he has helped us to become obedient and to make soul winning and you know, whether it be by crusade and whatever means to be a regular part of what we do. And God bless everyone that was a part of yesterday's crusade in Jesus' name. So the harvest is plenteous for the laborers of few. Yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have... Where is that? Anybody that doesn't know that will tell the person to wait behind. So basically, Jesus is the plan, but we're still going further. The seed, I mean, we're talking about, you know, except the corn of grain fall to the ground, we're talking about sowing and reaping, right? I'm trying to be very, very slow and deliberate so that we'll be very clear. So we know it involves the seed. Now, the seed was Jesus' death on the cross. Are we together? And what was the harvest? You and I. Praise the Lord. Many sons. Don't forget this. After his kind. So to get many sons, he did what? He sold his son. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's not where it finishes. That's not where it ends. You and I are also supposed to sow our lives in order to reap even more souls. Somebody said each one rich one. He made the first sacrificial soul. He sowed his life. And then he harvested me. I'm supposed to do what? I'm supposed to also sow sacrificially and harvest and harvest more sons. Is that correct? Ask your neighbor, are you doing that? Praise the Lord. And don't forget the harvest is after its kind. Hey, before you start getting afraid, I'm not talking about dying physically. Amen. Amen. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> he has already paid the price once and for all. Uh, the only thing that needs to die is our flesh, the old man. You don't need to die. All you need to do is surrender your life to Jesus. So that's the only kind of death we're talking about, the flesh. And that's what Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 is talking about. Galatians 2, 20. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And then in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, Hebrews 2, 10, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons, and sons includes daughters as well. Praise the Lord. In bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Hallelujah. So, perfect plan. And the plan is going to achieve a lot. But then there's another problem. It is true that with God, nothing is impossible. It is also true that I can do all things. But don't forget that the work Jesus came to do on this earth was not just a spiritual, it's essentially a spiritual work. But he came in the flesh, am I correct? Praise the Lord. He came in the flesh. And obviously he could not do it alone. You know, we sing the song, everywhere he went, he was doing good. So, you know, he went from Capernaum to this place, to that place. And as they walked, you know, it's, it's hard work. But he did it. Praise the Lord. Let, let me paint a picture. Imagine if there was only one doctor in Lagos. Mm. Is there any doctor here? Be a very rich person. <laughs> there was only one doctor in Lagos. <clears throat> and if the doctor said, or the government said, ah, no, we can't have that, so that people don't die, I mean, there will be so much pain and suffering. They said, okay, let's, let's have a system in place. Let's have that one doctor train. Let her train a doctor. Let that doctor, let her go ahead and train a doctor in every local government in Lagos, right? That's, is that a good plan? Yeah. Oh, very good plan. And so he trains every doctor. So every local government has a doctor. And each local government doctor is supposed to train some more doctors. Do you get it? Aha. Uh -huh. And then it goes. So that eventually we're going to have, instead of one doctor in Lagos, we're going to have a doctor in every local government, in every constituency, in every neighborhood, in every street. You get it? That's the plan. Praise the name of the Lord. But what happens if one of those doctors refuses to pull his weight? If he refuses to do what he's supposed to do? If he refuses to let his light shine, what happens? What happens to that plan? Eh? The plan is distorted. He sold Jesus to reap more sons. You and I are supposed to go around like little Jesus, doing exactly what he did and more. We're supposed to be like little Jesus everywhere. But my question is, are you doing that? Are you a little Jesus? Are you Jesus in your office? Are you Jesus in the market? Are you Jesus in your neighborhood? How about your family? It was a question. This is where everybody looks up, left, right. The story is told of a little boy in a big church who told his mother, mother, mommy, 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 I saw Jesus in church. <laughs> and the mother thought, ah, Junior, this boy's imagination. And she just, quiet, and she forgot about it. And then next Sunday, as we got to church, I was taking him to um, Sunday school or junior church. And the boy suddenly shouted, Mommy, Mommy, see Jesus. And guess who it was? The pastor. <laughs> this little boy was not alive when Jesus walked the earth. But he had been taught that Jesus was kind, patient, compassionate. That everywhere he went, he was doing good. That if there was sickness, Jesus would heal the sickness. He had been taught that where there is trouble, Jesus would bring calm. He had been taught that wherever there was confusion, Jesus would give wisdom and so on and so forth. And this pastor had been so nice and patient and kind and he even bent down to help him tie his shoelaces. So as far as that boy was concerned, who was that pastor was... When I saw that story, I paused. And I thought long and hard. I felt very sad. 
I ask myself, can anybody mistake me for Jesus? I hope you're asking yourself the same question. Can somebody, can a little child meet you and go home and say, Mommy, Daddy, I met Jesus. You don't have to share the answer with us. Just, I'm sure you've answered it in your heart. And God have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. See, if I'm the Jesus in my office, if you are the Jesus in your shop, if you are the Jesus behind the staring, if you are the Jesus in the marketplace, in the hospital, in the school, then the plan will be successful. The plan will be effective. And the plan will achieve the result, you know, the purpose it was set to achieve. Don't forget that Christian means Christ-like. The question is how Christ-like are you and I? Everywhere he went, he was doing good. How about you? How about me? When they ran out of wine at a wedding feast, he turned water into wine. He met a funeral party, um, going to bury a young girl, he raised Jairus' daughter. He met a woman bleeding for many years, he healed her. He encountered Zacchaeus, he turned his life around. He encountered blind Bartimaeus, he opened his eyes, etc., etc., etc. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. If somebody reads you, what are they going to discover? What book? Would it be a horror story? Or would it be a plan of salvation? That's why he said in Genesis 1, 26, that's the plan from the beginning. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Again in Psalm 82, verse 6, he said, I have said, ye yeah, are gods. In John chapter 14, verse 12, he said, the works that I do shall ye do also and greater works than this shall he do. You do because I go unto my father. In John chapter 14, verse 9, I picked something very interesting. Jesus said, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? You know what that means? That nobody should be asking to see Jesus once they see you. Praise the Lord. If anybody is looking for Jesus, they should say, ah, Jesus lives on my street. Ah, my manager is Jesus. My neighbor, Jesus. But currently, I think it's fair to say that that's not the case, right? Right? Answer now, right? That's why arresting Jesus was a problem. Have you ever thought why they needed to get Judas and Insider to betray Jesus? Why couldn't they just go and pick him up? Because they couldn't tell him apart. All the disciples looked like Jesus. They dressed like Jesus, spoke like Jesus, did everything like Jesus. And so it was difficult to tell who Jesus was apart. They needed a, an insider. Can anyone mistake you for Jesus? Can they, if they wanted to arrest Jesus, can they mistakenly arrest you? Please answer now. Eh? May the Lord have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I bring you a simple charge and a plea. That you and I are the, are the ones stopping the plan. We're the ones stopping the plan of salvation, the Great Commission. We have busied ourselves playing church. We have busied ourselves enjoying the, you know, basically we have made church into a club and we just come and we gallivant and we celebrate and we rejoice but we forget to be the Jesus out there. And the world needs you. The world needs me. The world needs little Jesuses like you and I going out everywhere doing good. And my prayer is that from today there will be a change in the name of Jesus. But of course, you know that you can't start this journey except you surrender your life to Jesus. 
I'm going to make two calls today. First of all, if you're here and you have never given your life to Jesus, please raise your hand. I want to pray with you. You are not born again. You, there's no way you can be a little Jesus. It could be a little something else, but I won't mention it here. So if you're here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, please raise your hand. I beg of you by the mercies of God so that all we have shared would not have been in vain. Are you here and you have never surrendered your life to Jesus? Just raise your hand. I want to pray with you quickly. Hallelujah. Number two, you are here and you've been going through the motions. When you feel a form, you feel Christian as opposed to Muslim or Hindu. But your life, and please let's all bow our heads and close our eyes, everyone. But your life has been far from being Christ-like. There's no way in a month of Sundays that they could mistake you for Jesus. Please raise your hand. I'm not calling you out, but I need to pray with you. It's time for change. It's time to fit into the plan. All eyes closed and all heads bowed, please. Is there anybody? Are oh, we all good? All correct? Father, we bless your name. We give you all praise and all glory. We ask, Almighty Father, that you make each and every one of us like little Jesus. That we will stop playing church and we will be Christ-like. Thank you, everlasting Father. And Daddy, I ask that by your Spirit, you will cause everyone to never, ever forget what you're saying to them today until we meet you in glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
left hand side under that banner, somebody will meet with you for a very short period of time. Okay, for the rest of us, let's lead into the HDR news. Chronicles chapter 16 verses 34 says, All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We thank the Lord for granting us the opportunity to see the last day of the month of October. We pray that all outstanding blessings will be received today in Jesus' name. We we'll welcome everyone again to the last Sunday in October. We want to warmly welcome our first timers to his throne room. We love and appreciate your coming. Our weekly program runs as follows. We meet every Tuesdays for our Digging Deep service by 6 p.m. This last Tuesday, we had an interesting study on Samson, the anatomy of a fall. We learned that Samson disobeyed both God and his parents. He sinned a lot with his eyes, and unfortunately, it was the same eyes the enemy took out first when he was attacked. He had a lot of pride. We also learned that bad parenting can affect the future of a child, and we sealed ourselves in God's power that whatever gift he has given us, we will not miss it or lose it in the name of Jesus. Join us same time next week for our monthly film show. You wouldn't want to miss this. And please, don't come alone. Here is a little preview. In his line of business, it is purchased before cost. So we don't know what we are getting into. But we know what we are getting out of it. The devil has never and will never give any free gift to anyone. I don't have one! I don't get you right. His gifts are nothing but beautifully wrapped time bomb counting down to its own. That is why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. with the blood of Jesus. Why don't you join us next week as we knock on heaven's door again? Our monthly crusade held yesterday at the church premises featuring film show and welfare. We thank God for the success of the crusade. We have three services every Sunday. Our breakfast service starts at 7 a.m. The sunrise service starts at 8.45 a.m. And the watering house service, which is the youth church, starts at 10.30 a.m. Worship with us at any of these services convenient for you. And we believe God will minister and bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Our house fellowship holds every Sunday evenings by 6 p.m. Strictly via Zoom. At our fellowship last Sunday, we were shown different ways to which we can persecute Christ and how to avoid doing such. We discussed different views and opinions, and it was a very enlightening time. This evening promises to be another interesting study time. We will be discussing the topic, How are the mighty fallen? Don't come alone. Beloved, the welfare department is planning a jumbo sale. The department is requesting for clothes, shoes, kitchen utensils, bags, and other items you have in the house that is no longer in use but still in very good shape. These 
items can be dropped in church for sorting or call us for pickup on 080-369-54186. Our Believers class holds every Sunday immediately after the watering house service at 12.30. We would also be having the workers in training program for those who want to join the workforce and workers who have not passed through the training. This starts this Sunday after the watering house service as well. Praise the Lord. Our breaking fallow ground holds on the 1st of November by 6 a.m. physically at the church. It is another time to set the new month in God's hands. Our 11th Holy Ghost service of the year 2021 will hold on the 5th of November. This is God Bless You, Part 10, themed the appointed time, Venue Redemption Camp. Let's be expectant as our appointed time is here. Our monthly Thanksgiving service holds on the 7th of November. Please come with your family and friends with your dance issues and a heart of gratitude. This is the redeemed Christian Church of God, his throne room, the place of his presence, the place of his power where decrees are made and nations impacted. Remain in Christ, remain in power. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will give us grace to be able to do as much as we should concerning the announcement of the faith in Jesus' name. I just want to take a moment to encourage the youth to not miss digging deep. I mean, the film show for any reason. I pray God will speak to us even with that movie. And you have seen a little part of it, and I can tell that it will really be interesting. God bless you, even as you come in Jesus' name.
the little Jesus. We will not disappoint you. Every grace and every ability that we need, O oh God, to indeed look like you, to indeed be Jesus. Father, you give unto us in the name of Jesus. As we go this week, O oh God, we commit into your hands. Please go before us. Make every crook path be straight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let our light shine before men that they may see our good work and glorify you. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace. Surely, this is shall follow all the days of my life. And I shall be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shalom.